The main reason this variant is concerning is because of the number of mutations it carries in one part of its genome called the spike. And uh, many of these mutations have been linked to the virus's ability to escape to a certain extent uh, immunity that is conferred by past infection or vaccines. So that's the main reason why people are so concerned about Omicron. But how does it work? There's been a lot of talk about uh, patients presenting with milder symptoms, but that it could also be more contagious. What do we actually know about this new variant? We actually know very little. All we know is that it's rapidly gaining ground in um, parts of South Southern Africa, which may or may not mean that it's more transmissible than the Delta variant that has been uh, globally prevalent in the last few months. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's more transmissible, but it could be. Uh, as far as disease severity is concerned, we simply don't know. It's very early days because most people with COVID-19 tend to deteriorate in their second week of illness. So you do need to observe people for a sufficient amount of time before you can conclude whether Omicron is more or less severe. So at the moment, we actually don't know the variant's transmissibility and uh, severity. Okay, so there's, there's no way that we can actually really compare it to Delta at this time? No. At the, we, we still need time to sort that out. Mm. Uh, from what you have seen, are you worried about what Omicron could hold? It's concerning if it uh, spreads as much as Delta has, for sure, uh, mm. because there have been four variants of concern before Omicron. We've had Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta. Out of those four, Alpha and Delta have really spread around the world very, very efficiently. Beta and Gamma have gained regional dominance, but haven't really been able to kick off like Alpha and Delta have. So it's kind of a 50-50 split. So we're not sure what will happen with Omicron in the coming weeks to months. When do you think we'll know how well the vaccines will work against this variant? And if there is a need for a new vaccine or a tweak to the vaccine, how long will that take? Right, uh, we'll know about the vaccine uh, effectiveness in stages. So the first thing we need to do is to actually grow the virus in the lab, which HKU has done, and um, then basically take that virus and see how well antibodies from patients or people who have received the vaccine actually neutralize the virus. So that's a relatively simple experiment to do. And we can compare how, uh, how much escape Omicron has uh, uh, with respect to previous variants like Alpha and Delta. Now that experiment is relatively simple and we should see answers in the uh, coming weeks, hopefully by uh, the end of December, uh, definitely. In, in terms of actual field work, uh, we can also, uh, uh, South Africa would be ideally placed to uh, uh, conduct a lot of field work in terms of how well the vaccines are actually working in people in terms of protecting them from Omicron or keeping them out of hospital. So that may take a little bit more time, but hopefully we'll know by January or February. Now you spoke before about that there being a large number of spike mutations within Omicron. What does that actually mean? Yeah, so mutations basically in the, in mutations of the genome basically lead to changes in the spike protein. So if somebody is vaccinated, they have a lot of antibodies, that's good, but a change in the virus's spike may mean that these antibodies are less effective at uh, actually neutralizing the virus. Now, that may or may not translate to a decreased effectiveness of the vaccine. For example, for Delta, we know that the effectiveness of vaccines against symptomatic COVID-19 does drop for the Delta variant, but the vaccines still remain very effective for severe COVID-19 due to the Delta variant. So um, spike mutations are concerning in terms of making people more susceptible potentially to infection, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the infection is going to be more severe. So vaccines may still work at keeping them out of hospital. So time will tell uh, what happens with Omicron. Now in Hong Kong, uh, we have a COVID zero approach. Do you think this is the right approach uh, to containing this variant? Well, what COVID zero at the moment has meant is that Hong Kong has had to make relatively fewer adjustments uh, for its arrangements for inbound travelers. So around the world, you know, there's been this furor and debate about travel bans and how effective they are, etc. But in terms of Hong Kong, which has one of the most stringent uh, uh, quarantine regimes in the world, it's, it's meant relatively few adjustments. So there have been adjustments that need to be made, but we have layers of protection in place to make sure that Omicron doesn't get into the uh, 
community. And uh, these measures have been very successful against Delta in the last few months. So hopefully uh, we can keep that up. With the limited information that we have on this new variant, what do you think would happen if it actually got into Hong Kong? Yeah, you know, um, this disease severity due to some of these variants could be very different in different parts of the world, depending on what has happened there with regards to COVID-19 and vaccination before. So in places in the world where you have high vaccination rates or massive community outbreaks in the past, they might have built up sufficient levels of population immunity that Omicron would find very difficult to escape. So there might still be a lot of transmission, but it doesn't make people really sick. But if you talk about uh, places like Hong Kong, which have relatively lower vaccination rates in the elderly susceptible population, and very few people having caught COVID-19 before, Omicron could cause a major community outbreak and really wreak havoc to the healthcare system locally. So there, there might be a lot of differences in terms of how bad Omicron is, depending on you know what's happened there pandemic-wise. Dr. Shridhar, thank you very much for joining me today. No problem, thanks.